Hey everyone, I've got some breaking news about a new hair loss medication that was just approved by the FDA. However, it's not gonna be for everybody. Let's talk about it. This new drug is called baricitinib, also known as Illumiant, and it was approved just a couple days ago. And I just wanted to make sure that I sat down and talked about it right away because I'm already starting to see some questions, even over on Instagram. And I'm not seeing a lot of answers online. I'm seeing just a, like a lot of headlines, but people seem to be confused. So I thought I would do the reporting and dig down into it and let you guys know what this, what this new drug is all about. Quick disclaimer, of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a healthcare practitioner, but what I am gonna do is report on this and list all my sources down in the description box. These are primary sources or from physicians. So if you wanna dig any further, of course, go ahead and check out those links down below. So we're seeing the words baricitinib and alopecia being kind of thrown around there in the zeitgeist. What does it mean actually? Okay, so we've got this drug, it's an oral medication, and it has just come out of a whole bunch of trials on it, and it has now been approved for severe alopecia areata. And the reason I'm saying alopecia areata is they're using the word alopecia a lot, I'm finding like in the press and just sort of the sound bites that you're hearing, but it's actually specified not for different types of alopecia, but specifically for areata. And that particular type of hair loss uh, is more related to the, is it related to the immune system? And it is more typified by patchy hair loss and sometimes complete hair loss. So that is where you would have the sort of severe alopecia areata come in. The confusion that I'm starting to see is, I'm starting to see questions like, but I have a little bit of baldness or I've just got a little bit of hair loss, is this for me? According to the literature, according to what I'm seeing, according to what I'm hearing physicians saying, no, it is not for androgenetic alopecia, it is not for telogen effluvium at this time, it is specifically for the condition of alopecia areata, which is not what every hair loss sufferer is dealing with when it comes to hair loss. Alopecia areata affects 300,000 people just in the United States alone, and about one third of them may be able to benefit from good results from this particular medication. So let's talk a little bit about the study. I had a look, and I've been looking at some amazing before and after photos. They are just shocking, especially considering if you're a hair loss sufferer like me, I mean, I don't have alopecia areata, and I've never taken this drug, another disclaimer, but there's just not a lot on the market in terms of pills, in terms of giving you a really good restoration of hair health. I mean, we have access to things like Rogaine, there are some other medications, and if you have hormonal-related hair loss, there are some medications that sort of target that, but in general, there is just no one pill right now, um, or sort of before this moment, if you had alopecia areata, that would help to restore your hair. This is actually the first of its kind for alopecia areata. So it is exciting for those alopecia areata sufferers out there. The study itself was actually super interesting. It was a study of 1,200 people. So that is a pretty good sample size because I've spoken before in a video about ketoconazole where they did a sort of test of ketoconazole versus minoxidil. And in that test, the test group was only 40 people, 20 on one, 20 on the other. So. This is a good size. Um, the interesting thing was they tested four milligrams of baricitinib versus two milligrams of it versus a placebo. And so they found that the group that was taking the four milligrams had the best results. In fact, 39% of them saw significant uh, hair regrowth, which is pretty high number. That's more than one in third. And of that percentage that it did work for, which was 39%, after a year, three out of four of them had, what was it? 90% scalp hair coverage. So they really got a really, really good result from this immunosuppressant drug. This is interesting too. 40% had full regrowth in their eyebrows and eyelashes. The people that took a smaller dose, the two milligrams, had success. It just wasn't as robust and impressive as the group that had taken the four milligram amount. My battery died, so I apologize if the positioning is a little off from the last clip. Um, you may have heard of baricitinib also because it's been used both for COVID treatment and also for rheumatoid arthritis, but it is now also approved to be used for this form of alopecia. Another interesting thing, I mean, there are various side effects, and of course, if you're gonna take this medication, your doctor is going to talk you through this, your pharmacist, et cetera, and so forth, but it is gonna be coming with a black box warning. Um, the black box warning is what the FDA puts on, uh, and it's the most stringent warning for drug and medical devices on the market. And this one is going to say that it has potentially serious complications such as infections. More Helen in editing here, I did not want to forget to say the most common side effects with Illumiant, which according to the website of this drug are upper respiratory tract infections, such as a cold or sinus infections, nausea, 
cold sores and shingles. I feel like I'm one of those CNN commercials, you know, where they just go like on and on and on about the side effects and you get to the end of it and you're like, who would ever want to take that? I have known someone who suffered from what I believe she had said was alopecia areata, which were like circular patches. And the treatment at the time was just steroid injections and there wasn't anything else. So for people like that, this is gonna be a, an amazing new thing that they can try to see if they get, if they're in the sort of 39% of people where this works really well for them and they get like basically a full head of hair back. If you look at the before and afters from the uh, study, they are just, they're pretty, they're pretty shocking in a good way. And again, I have absolutely no skin in this game. I do not stand to gain a single thing. If you look at my description box, there are no affiliate links. I'm not trying to push this on anybody, nor with anything else I talk about on this channel. I'm just here to try and help educate you on something you might've heard about and maybe lend some extra information and some context from someone who's really suffered from hair loss and is also a journalist, that's what I do. So I thought if I put those two things together, I could make something that could be useful for you. Speaking of which, there's one piece of information that I did not want to forget to leave out, and that is the price of this stuff. So I hope you are sitting down for this one. The list price, uh, according to Ellie Lilly, the manufacturer, is $2,497.20 for a 30-day supply of two milligram tablets. Not the four milligram that seems to have the most effect on people, but just the two milligram tablets. I don't know right now what the four milligram is. Maybe it's twice this if you're taking uh, double the amount. Um, but it says the actual cost of the drug for treating alopecia areata will vary according to the dose and insurance coverage. So there you have it. So the key takeaway here is that if you have telogen effluvium, if you have androgenic or androgenetic alopecia, sometimes you see it written as both ways, baricitinib, AKA Olumiant is not for you. It is specifically indicated for alopecia areata. Hope that was helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe, do all the things, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.